Oh, oof. What is going on my people? It's your boy Ellis and this is episode 4 of my trading from $100 or £100 series which I am super pumped for. Um, if you haven't seen the last episode, I would suggest you go check that out. I went over um, finding the winning trading strategy. So in that, I went over like, there's, there's if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. But basically, I covered like, there's a million different ways to trade the market. It's just to find something that resonates with you and what you are comfortable with. Um, something that I should have mentioned in that one is like, when starting, it's good to start with like a mechanical strategy. So by mechanical, I mean like, um having like criteria that have to be met before placing a trade instead of like being discretional like after you gain a certain level of experience then you can start being like disc a discretional discretionary type of trader whereas in like based on your experience you've seen certain things happen before and if you consistently take part in that pattern over time you will be profitable but for the starting stages because like that can be a bit more i mean um, it can put your confidence a bit down when you're not winning as much. So, I mean, regardless of any strategy trade that trade, there is times when you won't be winning as many trades. But starting out your first, like if it's your first year, first two years or so, I think mechanical is the way forward. By mechanical, as I was saying, I mean like having filters. So like, for example, having like a one, two, three, four approach. So if, if um, filter one is complete, then you take that, if filter two is complete, then you take that, if filter three is complete, then you take that, if filter four, then you, you just say, okay, this is a good trade, let's take the trade with um, your set stop loss and profit target criteria, that's whatever that is. Um, whereas in discretionary trading, then it's just like, okay, I've seen this pattern before, like prices at this key level, blah, blah, blah. I know this based on previous price action, this could happen and etc. etc. And then you can also add your filters but they wouldn't pay that much of a big role. So if you were, for example, using the mechanical strategy, as I was just saying, and you get two criteria that's hit and not all four of them, then if you take that trade, then it's kind of not meeting your the criteria. So if you have a strategy where you have to stick to that specific criteria and you and you stick to that for more than two days, more than two weeks, more than two months, at least six months, then I am pretty sure you will start to see, I'm not guaranteeing it, but you'll probably start to see um, a good turnaround. So that's what I will be starting with. I go less discretional and more into the mechanical side of it. So um, I load my charts up now. Let me load this stuff. Let me just start a screen record actually. Okay, so now we've got the chart loaded up. Um, as you can see, I've got a few lines already on there. Um, I've got a few boxes from like, um, from previous things that I was testing to see if they'll work out or not. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically go over like, the basic um, template that I'll be using to place my trades. When starting like with small capital, it's important that you don't over trade or anything. So I'm going to be using only one currency pair, which is the GBP USD, and I'm going to be using a shorter time frame, which is the 15 minute. I don't think I've 100% decided if I'm going to use the 15 minute yet, but hopefully it's either the 15 or the one hour. I'm going to do some more testing after this, but for the video's sake, let's just go through on the 15 minute. I think I'll probably stick to the 15 minute. And yeah, so this is the chart. If you if you don't know what charting software or platform this is, the link is in below. I've made a video about choosing the right brokerage. I think that was episode two. So this is TradingView, links below, go sign up. It's free. Um, you can do a membership, but the free the free version is, is more than enough and you can link it with your brokerage and whatnot. I've explained everything in the previous episode two, I think it was. So, what I'll be doing, I've already got a few indicators on here. Indicators aren't necessary. As I said, you could have a naked chart and with like with discretion, just a certain, just some lines and understanding how the market ebbs and flows, like ups and downs, then you can place a trade and be profitable over time. But for the sake of being a new like a new beginner, I think it's important to have that mechanical kind of template to to point you in the right direction. So you don't need all of these, but I'm just using them to make the analysis part a lot easier because it kind of gives you the direction, like calculated through all this mathematical kind of equation and whatnot. Forget the blue and the white lines that you see. Those are from like a higher time frame where I was doing some analysis and just like putting in some support resistance and some um, channels and whatnot. So we're gonna drop down. To, so under high, we could use that as well as a part of the on the lower time frame to see. A type of like 
the, we call them like inflection points. So if you see something happening around a certain point, then you can then take up a trade based on that. Like as you can see from here, on the higher time frame, that's a strong level of like resistance support. So if price breaks and retests, you can see you could have took that long blah blah blah. But if that's not your strategy, then you can't really trade. You can trade it, but then you just trading whatever you see which is not really ideal as a beginner you need to have a set criteria i'm going to stick to this and if you stick to your criteria then if you miss a trade it's not even that big of a deal because for example say that say say you went to the airport and you book a flight to go to london and you miss a flight to go to america why would that bother you so it's just the same as the same as trading like you have a specific strategy that you trade if something miss if you miss an opportunity or you miss something it didn't fit your opportunity didn't fit your style so it shouldn't bother you too much like just stick to your plan and of you get to your destination <laughs> that's a good um that's a good one i think anyway so let's let's break this down so i've got the 200 and the 50 ema so it measures an estimated amount that price has moved over the past 200 candles and over the past 50 candles so as you can see, it kind of already tells you when price is in an uptrend and when price is in a downtrend. So if you can look from look here, um, the 200 is in the white. You can see that when price is above it, when when it's below the candles and whatnot, it says it's, it shows that it's in an uptrend. It's going up. Price is above it. Price is moving up. Um, the 50 EMA is obviously it's a shorter period, but you can use that as like a dynamic support resistance kind of thing. So the 200 will kind of definitely give you a more clarified understanding of where the market's heading the 50 kind of just it gives you that that example as well it's more choppy and probably and kind of less reliable in a sense so but you can use it as like dynamic or support resistance and then when you can see when them when they're just like crossing and whatnot like that just like consolidation and you can see when price is below it that's like in a downtrend so that's like say for example that's criteria one so if price is above it one is ticked we have to wait for another criteria, two is ticked, three, blah, blah, blah. So now let's go down to the bottom. I've got like the RSI, the ATR, which is the average true range, and then another stock RSI. You don't need both RSIs, as I'm saying, like, this is just something that I've been thinking about in my head. I'm thinking this could potentially work as a good strategy if I was supposed to combine stuff. I'm not saying this is the way forward, but it's how I, I was just thinking, you know what, this will give me some confidence as well as some this will give me some confidence and I think it'll provide enough opportunity for me to get involved as well as like um as well as high strike rate opportunities. So let's take an example of these two trades that I took. Like I was just no, I never took them but I was just like messing around. I'm gonna do some back testing and show you the results that I come up with. But if and show you the results that I come up with, but like for example we wait for um, the, the EMA is across, meaning that the, the trend might change or something like that. Then you wait for them to cross, you wait for the, the specific opportunity that you're waiting for. It could be an engulfing candle, it could be a rejection candle, it could be like the EM, the, the stock RSI to be peaking, to be peaking down as in over, oversold. And you, you just have your plan ready. So if you went back to the previous episode then and you give, where's that book? This book that I recommended in the previous episode, it kind of explained a lot of filters that you can use for your trading. So where I'm saying like engulfing candles, highs and lows, Fibonacci's and whatnot. So you can use all these for that like extra confirmation. So if you haven't watched the previous episode, go check it out, get that book, go through it, do your research online, all the mother fun stuff. I've not actually created a strategy yet, but this is the basic, um, template that i'm going to use to trade with so i'm going to wait for the price to be trading above the 200 ema i'm going to wait for um the rsis to be bottomed out or at the top or topped out and i'll probably using like larger time frames to gauge of direction of where the market's going so as you can see like if you understand like it's the same analysis so if so I might look on the daily time frame to see where I, where I think price might head. So if I come back down here at this point when I saw that engulfing candle, I might think, you know what, it closed above the 200 EMA, the price might start to go up. So I might have a long bias. And then if I go down to the 15 EMA at this point, um, right there, let's put a line there. If I go down to the fifth, no, wrong line, um, this line. If I went down to the 15, e the 15 minute time frame at this point, then I could have said, where is that point? That's a long point away. At down here, 
then I could have said, okay, I'm only looking for long opportunities. So I might buy the dip. So I might buy on the dip and then sell on the high, or I might just buy on the dip and just let the trade run. So for example, even this, wait, for example, um, the line is somewhere down here. I know the market might be going higher. I might say, okay, let's wait for an EMA cross or let's wait for price to be trading above with a certain with a certain um, entry reason. So the example right here, right here, I, I've got an entry reason based on like what I what I have in my mind or what I think is acceptable. And I got in here, put my stops right here, and I just took like a two to one on a larger on a larger time frame. That could like if you're managing a larger time frame anyway, then that could be like let's see, that could be a, a way higher risk to reward ratio. So let's go. I can't even see it on here. <laughs> I can't even see the 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 thing on here. Where is it? I think it's this one here. So let's say I got in there and I was and I was managing managing it on a daily time frame. It's not. I mean, you probably lose a lot of trades because you like because the stops might get taken out. Because if you look at this on a daily time frame, I don't think no one would enter a trade right there with that stop unless you're like a, just a G. So if I had an end under 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 fifty minute time frame, I could have got in like like the perfect point with a with a very small stop loss, and that's like a sixteen percent gain. Now I'm not saying that's like what's gonna happen every time. I'm just showing you the possibility. So that might be slightly unrealistic, like most of the times, but it's it's a potential depending on how you manage it and and etc. and etc. So as I was saying, I will like I I I normally trade on the long on the, the daily time frame, but now because I'm with a smaller amount, I'm gonna use in the 15 minute time frame or the hourly, probably 15 minutes. And depending on where I get in on the 15 minute, I can then take a daily approach and manage it and manage it at a daily time frame level whereas in I take um, profit based on a, on a daily structure level so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pause all this I'm gonna go back probably around 50 trades in the past with my exact right my exact one two three four criteria in mind and then I'll just see how it would have worked out back it's just a, it's just a little back testing thing I mean back testing I'll do a separate video back testing altogether I think it's good but at the same time too much back testing can be very detrimental to trading because then you probably have like false expectations. It just past performance doesn't guarantee guarantee future future results. So it just gives you an idea of to, to understand your strategy a bit more and to see if it actually can work in a sense. But at the same time, the best way to find out if it can work is by putting it into the market and really trading it for around six months and and see how it is. Just making notes of everything, um, refining it if it needs refinement, and just going from there. So I'm going to stop the, this part here. I'm going to go back through the, um, for a few, probably like two months or three months or so. Let me mark three months down. Where's three months on this? So we're in September, July, May. I think I'll go back to, no, nah, March is too far. Um, I'll go back to the 5th. I'll go back to May. So I'll put a line. So I'll put a line there. Let's fatten that up a bit bang and i'll go back from here all the way to there back testing just to see how the trade would have played would have played out i will come back on and show you the results that I came up with hopefully it's fingers crossed it's a good result and then then episode five that we can hopefully start trading and make some cash that's that's what i'm waiting for to be honest so let's get this done okay so i'm back i've it's been a long day so it's actually like night now it's like 8 30 but nonetheless i've managed to get this done and I've written down my rules and and all that fun stuff. Probably can't see it well, but as I was saying in like the previous clips, I'll be using like a certain the EMAs, and then if price goes above, then I wait for a specific candle formation. Then I'll take like a two to one risk to reward. Blah blah blah. So I went back. I couldn't go back three months. I was doing under fifteen minutes time frame, so I couldn't go back three months. But I went back to um what month is this? I went back to the beginning of August. And I have collect. I have um, found twenty trades that meets the criteria. Um, how many of them were winners? Twelve of them was. Twelve of them were winners, and eight of them were losers. So that comes to a sixty percent like strike rate. I mean, that's only. Oh, that's like over a month and a over around two months back. Just call that two months of like of price action. You probably need around six months of data or data to really calculate what the strike rate is. So the last two months, um, 
it gives a reading of 60% with 20 trades taken. So I think that's 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 good enough to work with. It shows that it is a profitable strategy if I'd have stick to, if I'd have started it from the first of August until now. Let's say I was showing with a hundred pound, then it's a, remember it, it being a two to one risk to reward um, ratio. Um, for the eight trades that I lost would have been like eight hundred pound, and the twelve and the twelve trades that I lost would have been a one two thousand four hundred pound. So you can see that it is 60% 2 to 1, that's a very good strike rate and risk to reward. I mean, if you are a successful trader, you know that, but I'm not saying that's what I'm going to get consistently. Like, obviously, I'd have to build the data and whatnot to really gather as much information to see, like, a, a very realistic expectation. But for the purpose of this video, that's what it is, a 60% strike rate. I, I, I honestly was hoping for something like 80% to put in the title to make it that more attractive, but you know what? 60% is the truth. It's kind of what like most perfect most professional most professional traders are probably around 40-50% like winning rate and they're still profitable. I mean the average the person that comes into the market they think that they have to win 90-80% of the trades to be successful in the market and that's not really the case. But I kind of wanted to see that in the back testing results to make that title a bit more drawn like interesting but 60% I'm just going to be straightforward and put it in there it's a 60% 60, 60 is good I mean it's a positive number and the 2 to 1 so that's great yeah so that's pretty much it for this video um so episode 5 should be going over my first free trade and I'll probably go a bit more about backtesting and how to do it and whatnot so leave leave comments below to let me know topics that you'd like me to cover because I don't really want to just every Every week, I just go over the trades that I've taken and had the accounts grown or how the accounts been. I want to actually have a topic to talk about, so maybe I'll show you how the trades that I've taken, how it's how the strategies performed, and then that for like the first three minutes, and then for the next like two three minutes, then we will just talk about like a certain topic that you might be interested in. So that's that, and hope you guys enjoyed the video i am really looking forward to starting this and see how it ha what happens by like december times like what the account would be at so starting with 100 let's see if you can get to i don't know i'm not gonna put a number out there but we'll just see how it goes um if you're wondering what that box is right there um if you are interested in the car car videos that i make then that's a little my, my first modification to the car over there if you guess if you can you guess what it is it looks like a um a splitter i don't know we'll see what it is um that should be my next video but that being said i am going to edit this video and hopefully get it up tomorrow for you guys like comment subscribe share and i will see you in the next one let's hide hide my strategy from you guys <laughs> i don't want people to follow exactly what i'm doing like i, I recommend here you go again it's a good book to start with get the basics down create your own strategy so i'm not really just going to give because i don't want you to trade exactly what i'm trading and then say oh this is crap it's not working i can't you know what find what works for you that's what i've been trying to say so there you go the link in the link for this book is in the description and with that being said bye bye oh i'm tired